Hey guys! So, first of all, sorry I've been kind of AWOL lately. Um, with everything in my recital and all the craziness of school, I decided that it was prudent to not record for the past month or so. Um, but now that I'm done, I can start recording again. Um, on a related note, thank you to everyone who watched my live stream. Um, if you didn't get to see it, or were in the wrong time zone, or whatever, or you want to hear better quality recordings, um, I'm gonna have videos soon, and all of the audio except the duo is on my SoundCloud, um, and I'm the the duo will be posted at some point. I just I'm working out with the composer what she wants me to do. Um, so yeah, I I will link my SoundCloud in the description and everything like that. And now self promotion done. So, about a week ago, Troublemaker asked me to talk about chamber groups, and I said I would, and that's what this is going to be about. So, chamber ensembles are kind of interesting, because most of the time, you're all at a similar level, and none of you are older than the other, or if you are, it's very minimal. Um, and so it makes for a very different dynamic, and it makes for a different experience than a flute-piano duo, or an orchestra or a larger ensemble. Um, so the first thing is that, like, chances are there's going to be someone who steps forward as kind of an organizational leader, and that's really great and that's really important, though don't take that for granted. Um, and if no one's stepping forward, you might have to do that yourself, no matter whether you want to or not. Because you have to be able to organize rehearsals and concerts and whatever. So it's really good to have someone in charge of that. Um, there's this great website called Doodle, where you can set up polls with the availability of all the people involved. Um, we use it all the time, especially for larger ensembles, but even just for like a trio or a duo, I've used Doodle just to figure out when everyone's available, and then you can pick times to rehearse based on that. Um, so that's really an important thing. You have to be able to rehearse regularly and you need everyone there. There's no point rehearsing a quintet with only four people because the fifth voice is so important and chamber groups are so important. You need all the voices there. Because it's such a small ensemble, you need all the groups. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah. Organization. First big thing. Second is in rehearsals, chances are you're running them yourself. If you're in school, you might have a chance to get a coaching once or twice a week. Um, and that's great. And then you have to listen to them. But in your rehearsals, chances are you're by yourself. Which means that you guys have to run your own rehearsals. Um... First rehearsals are always kind of awkward, and you have to figure out the dynamic and everything like that. But after you get used to everything, people have to start speaking up. Um, and it's the responsibility of everyone in the group to talk. The or person who runs the organizational side of things isn't the only person, isn't the head of the group, and isn't the person dictating everything. If you have something that you want to say, or you want to rehearse, or something that you think didn't go very well, speak up. Um... Obviously, you want to be polite, and you don't want to just say, hey, that was wrong. It's like, hey, can we do that again? There was something weird there. It's the same deal as in my video about playing second. You can't really tell anyone that they're wrong, but you can ask them in a way to make it take the blame yourself or put the blame on the whole ensemble. Um, but in rehearsal, you can't let things slide. If you know something isn't together then you have to stop and say, hey, we're not together, let's try that again, or let's do this slower, or let's put a metronome over the loud over the speaker system, or just put a metronome on and try it with that. Because you really, really have to be able to play together. Um, so don't be afraid to speak up, even if you are the youngest member of the group. Um, your voice is just as valid, you do know what you're doing. Um, and make sure that things don't slide just because you're too nervous to speak up. Um, if you feel like the ensemble has a kind of dynamic where you're being alienated or you're being minimalized, marginalized, that's the word I'm looking for, um, then maybe talk to your ensemble members outside of a rehearsal and just be like, hey, I feel like I'm not being heard. Um, I feel like I need, I have ideas that we need to cover, but you guys aren't really listening to me, can we address that? Um, hopefully your ensemble is 
open to that, and if they're not, that's going to be a really hard dynamic to fix. Um, and you can always try to fix that by hanging out with each other, trying to become friends, and know each other personally. Like, the, the most effective chamber group I've ever had is my duo, and my partner, who is also a Tumblr person, um, has been one of my best friends since I got here. And so we work really well together because we know each other. We know how to talk to each other. So that's great. It means that sometimes it's a little uncomfortable if our friendship is having an issue. We still have to play together, but we're good enough friends that we've managed to work through all of that. Um, so chamber, chamber music bonding is also great. Um, go to dinner with your ensemble go to a movie, like, do things outside of music so that you guys can become friends and kind of know each other as people rather than as musicians. Um, and the biggest thing with chamber music is that you have to listen. You have to know exactly what is happening. You have to do all of the score study and you also just need to always have your ears open and always be blending and working to play as an ensemble. Because the reality is a chamber group needs to be a unit. You're not hearing five voices separately, you're hearing one voice together. Um, and that's very, very difficult, and that's why chamber music is hard. Um, but that's what you have to be working towards. Um, in rehearsals, isolate voices that play together and try to blend with each other. Um, if you aren't necessarily being able to blend with a member of your group, ask them to practice outside of rehearsal and just like figure out how they play. Um, and always, always listen. If you feel like you're not blending, then stop and go, hey, can we do this again? Or what kind of color are you guys going for? Um, always ask questions and always, always listen. I, like, I cannot emphasize that enough. You have to be listening. You have to be tuned into every single other person in that group. And that's why small ensembles play so well together, is if you know everything about everyone else's playing and know how to fit into that, it's an amazing experience. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the basics of chamber music um, and playing in a chamber ensemble and having your own ensemble. Um, there's tons of other things that you have to talk about in chamber music, but that's kind of the basis. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys are having a great week. Um, I know a lot of you guys are starting to hear back from schools, and I hope everything is going well. Um, don't take it to heart if you're not getting the responses that you think you should have or that you wanted. It's not the end of the world, um, but I hope everything is going really well. As always, if you guys have video ideas, let me know, and I will see you next week. And I promise that's actually not a lie. <laughs>